Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today's second video. We're going to have a look at whether it's 10 to 14 days. Well, today's second video, day 10, will take us to the 22nd of March. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with the XA GFS and ECM ensembles because they run to around a couple of weeks. And we're going to have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks, which gets us well into April. I'll get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that first video today was our 6M upload, so please check out that one if you'd like to do that. Please like, share, subscribe on vids. Thank you so much. No weekend forecast. Today we have scaled things back uh, over the past few weeks. Well, it's been a very busy, difficult time at Gazzo's Towers, but uh, hopefully we'll get things back in business, you know, in the, in the next few weeks. And certainly for April... I'm hoping to bring back all of the videos and uh, hopefully even the live streams as well will uh, be able to make a return before too much uh, longer. Uh, but we'll see how things go, of course. Uh, so uh, please like, just subscribe on this. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. We're very, very close to 13.3k. We just can't quite get over the cusp. Uh, we're on the cusp of 13.3k. We can't quite you know, get over the cusp. So uh, please uh, tell friends and family to subscribe as well and uh, get us to 13.3k. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, for doing that, right, okay, let's start off then having a look at Stratospheric de Development. Of course, I didn't do via yesterday. I uh, had my uh, CT scan uh, yesterday. Uh, all went well with that, by the way. Uh, so thank you so much, everybody, for all of your lovely comments and, and concerns. So um, have a biopsy, have a B... Um, I'm talking about BT scan. Have a biopsy, have the CT scan. And, uh, and, yeah, waiting for results. So as soon as I get the results, I'll let everybody know. And then we'll have a clear idea, of course, about where things are going, if we're going to take some time off, you know, for treatment and whatnot, then I'll have a better idea uh, about what's happening. Um, but, uh, but yeah, everything went fine, fine with that. I'm just waiting for results now. So thank you so much, everybody, for all of those lovely comments. But uh, that meant that I didn't do a video yesterday. So you've got to bring you up to date with uh, what's going on. So uh, we're going to start off having a look at uh, temperatures at 10 HPA over the North Pole. So things cooling down. I have a warming of stratosphere at 10 HPA over the Arctic and over the North Pole uh, over the past few days. But but in recent days, we've cooled things down as we expected we would. So uh, you see a black line pink there, somewhere close to minus uh, 30 after lifting up from around minus 60. Um, we're ho now hovering around minus 45, something like that. Uh, still above average, but certainly things cooling down at the moment. In the next week or so, though, we're going to see this lifting back up again, uh, I think. And that one should be, that warming should be the one that, you know, really is a hammer blow to the polar vortex and could even send zonal winds into reverse. We're about that in a moment. If we go low, low down to 30 HPA, there things have actually got quite cold again. So we did get a warming at 30 HPA. We lifted the temperature from minus 80 to minus 50. So really quite a significant warming, but a rapid cool down has taken place so we're now under minus 70 i think we'll see that lifting up as well over the next week so the, the next warming again should see that black line lifting back up so uh, at the moment things cooling uh, in the stratosphere as the polar vortex tries to uh, come back and keep going albeit it has been given a bit of a hammer blow but it is going to try and fight back it is fighting back um but there's going to be a renewed warming that uh, that could well be the killing blow for this year polar vortex so uh this is the latest uh gfs forecast you to refresh this is latest gfs um forecast uh so these blue colors here uh with some metros here these blue colors here are the cold temperatures trying to come back over the pole this is the polar vortex trying to get itself back into uh business and, and you see that over the next sort of few few days uh, the, the, the blue colours, the cold temperatures, they try to come back desperately, but notice by around this time next week, or towards the end of next week, another warming is beginning to take place over Siberia, again starting to push towards the uh, Arctic and to the North Pole uh, as well. So uh, once more, we are going to get like a renewed warming of the stratosphere that's going to take place. And uh, that's sustained, you know, right over top of the pole. Those orange colours in there around minus 20. So if you go back to the temperature scale, we go back to 10 HPA. Um, we can see that that's going to lift a black line up to around here, probably, that sort of level. So that is a really significant warming of the stratosphere there. And uh, that's sustained over several days. I think this will be enough to send zonal winds into uh, reverse. And by the time we get through to the end of March, it gets the 28th of March now,
on later GFS. And by the time we get to the end of March, you know, I think the, the polar vortex for this season will be pretty much done. This is from weatheriscool.com. Let's just take out some of these coloured lines. So the green lines are what's important. This is GFS ensemble uh, forecast for zonal winds. And uh, you can see at the moment, zonal winds have re-strengthened again. So they dropped out uh, a few days ago. We had the first warming of the stratosphere, although they did not re reverse. Um, they have pink, pink back up but you know they've lifted back up albeit not to the record breaking strong levels that we had uh back at the end of february but the green lines the, these are the gfs on some as you see most of those are now going into reverse underneath that zero line um most gfs on some members are sending zonal winds into reverse in around 10 to 14 days time so uh yes uh, we could well see a reversal of zonal winds and uh you know that would be the end of uh, due to the lateness of the year or, or the season uh, well into spring that could well be the end of the this year's uh, polar vortex and uh, we shall see then what impacts if any uh, we we get in the troposphere from like a blocking type perspective that is going to be very very interesting to see right so we we'll keep you updated on stratospheric developments of course as we always do at gavs uh weather feeds right let's have a look at central temperature we're currently standing at 6.7 which is 1.6 degrees above average pretty mild that's provisional to uh the 11th to yesterday to the 11th of uh march these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Let's go. We've got looking at Cheltenham today. Of course, we've got the Cheltenham Festival coming up uh, next week. Gold Cup will be on Friday the 18th, I believe. So um, we're going to start off uh, around or maybe even a little bit below average with the upper air temperature at the moment. Although it is relatively mild. Early to middle next week, going to get very mild. Even could even get quite warm. Lifting temperatures, you know, upper air temperatures lifting up. Uh, towards uh, maybe uh, 6 Celsius or, or, or 8, 6 Celsius, uh, 850 HPA. Service temperature could well lift up into the mid-teens Celsius. So a very mild spell of weather uh, coming up through the early to middle part of next week. And then a drop in temperature could take place through the third week of March. We might start to pull in some cold easterly winds. We are seeing signs of easterlies on today's model output. I don't know if they're phantom easterlies or whether the easterlies will strike back um, or attack of easterlies. I don't know. But anyway, uh, we are seeing signs of easterly winds. More about that in a moment. Today's GFS midnight operation room. This thick green line just here is dropping out, you'll notice. So it is a bit of a cold outlier later on. But there are several ensemble members that are going cold through this um, third to fourth week of March. Precipitation-wise, going to be some uh, showery spells coming up. Not, you know, a washout, but definitely going to be relatively mixed over the next uh, week or so. And then maybe even more so as we move from the third week into the fourth week of uh, March. We'll keep an eye on that. Snow row for Cheltenham looks like this. Not much going on from a snow perspective, but there could be a little bit of winchiness around the 22nd to the 24th or 25th of March, something like that. Two metre temperatures uh, look like that. So relatively mild uh, through next week, and then a drop in temperature after that, probably. Temperature anomaly is showing me to up to the 20th of March, looking a little bit mild on average of the UK and France and Western Europe. The cold temperature anomalies are still across those eastern and southeastern parts of of Europe where they've been on and off through most of the winter. Precipitation on this return 20th of March going to be driving average or England and Wales near a norm perhaps for Scotland and Northern Ireland. Latest info map from Earth, Nolskill.net shows got a deep area of low pressure just to the southwest approaches uh, today to the southwest UK and Ireland. Um, want to know more about what that's going to be doing over the next uh, few hours and check out today's 6am upload. We shall start going through some chart data, I think. Shall we do that? Shall we do it? Why don't we do it? Uh, right, okay, so I'm so sorry, everybody. Um, I'm going to start off over at the UK Met uh, Euro for midnight on a Tuesday, where we'll have low pressure to the west and high pressure to the east. So we're drawing up quite a warm southerly wind, and that's going to bring, really lift the temperatures up, you know, around the middle part of the week. I reckon mid teens Celsius, 15, 16 degrees, distinctly possible around the middle part of the week. Things will turn a little bit cooler, second half of the week, as this high pressure to reach in. There'll be a cold front that drops southwards, 30 to Friday, and high pressure ridge in behind it bring quite a bit of dry weather uh, but also probably quite chilly weather as well and the high pressure will begin to recede away to the east by midnight on Saturday next week um, with low pressure again trying to come out 
uh, all trying to come in from off the Atlantic. How far north we get this high pressure? Will we get it to Scandinavia? Going to be interesting to see. Will we put in a proper ECB UK make euro? Doesn't go, you know, uh, for that at this stage. But other model output is. Let's have a look at Icon. And again, we can see that uh, we've got low pressure to the west, high pressure to the east on Tuesday, drawing up a pretty warm southerly wind around the middle part of the week. Things turn a bit cooler and a bit rich as we get into the second half of next week, but still pleasant enough, I would have thought. But then notice high pressure bridging further northwards with Icon by next weekend. Properly starting to move to Scandinavia and probably start properly starting to bring in an easterly. So not particularly cold at that point. But you see across eastern, central eastern Europe from like Poland eastwards, and particularly, unfortunately, for Ukraine, looking very cold, the upper air temperatures. And um, those eases, if they last long enough, could start to drag in some really quite cold air from the east. This is that GFS midnight run that we know does become a bit of a cold outlier. So let's have a look at this one. Um, again, middle of next week going to be quite warm. Temperatures up to the mid teens Celsius with this sort of southerly, southeasterly uh, wind. And then the high pressure strengthens over Scandinavia. We start to pull in a proper sort of easterly through the second half of uh, next week. Low pressure comes up against that area of high pressure. But look how strong the blocking high is. Up to 1,050 millibars. Um, and despite this low pressure trying to come up against it, it really is bullied and, and sort of... Um, just deflected, to be honest, and, and moved away. So cold air is already by next weekend starting to seep in from the east. And, and the midnight GFS run does actually get wind properly into the east by day 10. This is 22nd of March. So again, it could be phantom easterlies, but proper easterlies start to move in by uh, uh, by day 10. And that will bring snow showers into eastern parts of the coast. Look at that, proper east, northeasterly there. Just beyond day 10, that would definitely bring snow showers into eastern parts of the country. Of course, it's very late on in the year. The sun's got a lot of strength to it, so the snow wouldn't last very long. But it would certainly feel pretty cold, especially what I've had through most of this winter. Overnight frost and snow showers being drawn in on those east to northeast winds. And then we just keep it pretty blocked, to be honest, and quite cold as we move to the end of the GFS midnight run. And by the very end, which gets us 28th of March, it looks like the high pressure is trying to get itself up towards Greenland. And we, we're starting the cold side of the, uh, of the uh, ridge. We've got the jet stream south of the UK. This could all be down to the sudden stratus, or not sudden stratus warming, but to the stratospheric warming and, you know, the, the dramatic weakening of the polar vortex, reversal zone winds, etc., etc., etc. It could be down to that uh, by the time we get through to the end of March. It might be like the impacts of it. Uh, this other 6Z is, but bear in mind that was a cold outlier from the GFS midnight run. This is GFS 6Z. Um, again, as we go through the next few days, we're going to find that initially midweek we're going to draw up this very mild southerly, southeasterly type wind. Then the high pressure going to try and set itself up over Scandinavia by next weekend, bringing in these east southeast. It's a bit, uh, you know, they're not being particularly cold initially. Uh, but if they last long enough, there is quite an appreciable area of cold air to our east. So if these easy winds last long enough, they could start to bring in air, but it's colder to produce snow showers into eastern parts of the country. What's it want to go there? We want to go back. It's just a matter of how quickly these easterly winds last. If they come off, they might be phantom easterly. It's that never materialise. We'll just have to wait and see. But definitely the output put does seem to be shifting in that direction for colder weather uh right okay if you enjoyed the video then please just smash the like button make sure you sub to the channel thank you so much everybody for doing that and drop a comment let us know what you about this and all of our videos thank you so much gm again middle of next week we're bringing up these southerly southeast winds will be very mild for the middle part of the week a little bit cooler later on as the high pressure repositions um and just where we get high pressure scandinavia the gm does not take high pressure to scandinavia it just keeps high pressure sitting over to the east of the country that probably keeps things pretty spring-like up to day 10 all of the cold air remains in the east and the southeast of europe with the gem and then the ECMWF is looking like this once more. Pretty mild, if not quite warm, around middle part of the week. A little bit cooler, second half of the week. And then the high pressure repositions up towards Scandinavia. Start to pull in these easterly winds. We have got cold air to our east. There's the upper air temperature showing minus 10 Celsius ice up to the low countries by Monday 21st of March. So we definitely poised to unleash 
not the bees, because it's too late for a beastly easy, but it's certainly poised to unleash cold easterlies anyway. And uh, by day 10, we're actually pulling in that cold air from the east. My 10 cells ice man pushing in from off continent. Probably an outlier, but it's probably a cold outlier. But, you know, it's the idea that it's definitely cold enough if we get wind into the east for long enough. Definitely cold enough. At, yeah, definitely cold enough to our east to bring probably cold weather and even snow showers in from the east. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tomedshow.com. Please showery burst to come over the uh, next few days. Then early next week, we bring up those southerly winds, which could bring some rain with them as well, but will be very mild. Then high pressure takes over later next week. We turn drier and cooler. And then up towards day 10, we start to bring in those easy winds, those snow showers beginning to gather to our east as we get towards uh, day 10. Okay, let's have a look at the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 22nd of March. 18 members of the ECM ensembles will have high pressure over and slightly to the north and northeast of the country, bringing in an easterly wind. But, you know, um, it could be quite a chilly easterly, I would have thought. 17 have high pressure more or less over the country, as far north with that high. So that could be quite spring like, quite mild. With winds from more of a southeast direction, and then 16, including the control and the operational run, takes a high pressure further north, proper Scandinavian high, with low pressure to the south. We bring in the winds from a long way east, and that drags that cold air in from eastern parts of uh, Europe. So this is definitely the coldest option, but the operational run not all that well supported by its ensembles in terms of taking the high pressure that far north. So just how far north in Scandinavia we get that high. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. Gets us to the 20, uh, 27th of March. 17 members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure to our east and lower pressure out to the west. That's probably going to be, be quite mild, bringing up wind from a southerly direction, but it could be turning a little bit more unsettled from off the Atlantic. 14 have low pressure breaking through from the Atlantic, so obviously that's going to be quite unsettled. 11 with high pressure well away to the northwest and around that. We bring in winds from a north or northeast direction. And then uh, nine will have low pressure over and just to the west of the country and will potentially be quite unsettled, but will also bring winds in from uh, the west and from the southwest. So um, range of options. It could still be quite cold towards the end of March. Just have to wait and see. Finally, the CFSB2 means a 500 millibar heights break down into weekly periods. The first week pin is going to take us from the 12th to the 18th of March. The coming week will have low pressure to our west. High pressure will be away to the east and we'll be bringing in a wind from off the Atlantic. So quite unsettled in the week ahead. Now look at week two though. Uh, 19th to 25th of March, Scandinavian high takes over properly and will bring in winds from an easterly direction and if the air comes in from far enough east we'll drag in that cold air that is sitting over eastern Europe. Week 3 also looks potentially quite cold. This is the 26th of March to the 1st of April. The high pressure then showing signs of retrogression towards Greenland and Iceland with lower pressure to our south and that could start to bring in more of the northeasterly type wind. Um, so maybe you can chart some wintriness coming into the south with this area, area of low pressure if a wing does get into the northeast. Can you believe this everyone? <laughs> After a snowless winter we get spring snow. Who would believe it happens a lot actually. Week 4 is the 2nd to the 8th of April. Trough of low pressure in Oskandavia. High pressure trying to get going around Spain again. So that's trying to bring up milder air from the south. But um, you know uh, the cold air is trying to keep going actually. Uh, so that will be a little bit of a battleground UK type situation. Temperature anomalies with week for week one with the CFS 12th to the 18th of March milder than average, very cold across eastern and southeastern parts of Europe. But uh, week two begins to cool things down. This is the 19th 25th of March, just beginning to lower the temperature a little bit then. And then week three actually goes colder than average. You would believe that. 26th of March to the 1st of April, uh, below average temperatures predicted then. And uh, only around average really for week four, second to the 8th of April. I reckon that could be another pretty chilly week, actually. So interesting developments, and we'll keep you posted, of course. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please can you smash that like button. Make sure you are subscribed to our channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. We're trying to get to 13.3k. We're so close to it. On the cusp of it, please uh, give us a sub. Thank you so much. And uh, don't forget to tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. It's amazing. It's incredible. Thank you so much, everyone.
we're doing that. Right, with that, I'm back. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, that's it then for today's video. Tomorrow we'll have 6 a.m. upload, and if that wasn't enough, we will have a 10 to 14 day uh, as well. As I say, I'm hoping to get things back into business by April. Just wait and see what's happening with my test results. Mrs. P is a little bit on poorly side as well. So, um, still quite a difficult time. It's better than it was like a few weeks ago here, but things still a little bit on the difficult side. So, um, hopefully we'll be able to get things cranking back up as we get into April. But, um, I do not see what's going on with, uh, with the old mouth. And, uh, as soon as I get test results back, I will let everybody know, of course. Right, you enjoy the rest of your Saturday afternoon, and for this video, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.